Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through legal problem 1551, minimum operations to make array equal. This is labeled as medium, um, but it's pretty straightforward. But I'd like to go through my thought process. Of course, there are multiple different ways. My way might not be the most optimal. In fact, actually, I know there are people who do this in O1 time complexity. The way I'm doing it is ON time complexity. So comment down below, let me know how you guys approach this problem. Let's take a look at the problem first. You have an array array of length n where array i is computed in this way, 2 times i plus 1. For all valid values of i, when i is greater than or equal to 0 but smaller than n. In one operation, you can select two indices x and y where x and y are both within the range of the array and subtract 1 from array x and add 1 to array y. So we we'll just basically perform these two operations. The goal is to make all the elements of the array equal. It's guaranteed that all of the elements of the array can be made equal using some operations. So given an integer n, the length of the array return the minimum number of operations needed to make all of the elements array equal. For example, n equals to 3. So what does n equal to 3 mean? That means the length of the array is 3. So and based on this formula, we can compute all of the three elements of this array as 1, 3, and 5. When i equals to 0, then 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So that's why the first element at index 0 is 1. The same way when i equals to 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. That's why the second element at index 1 is 3. So on and so forth, we can get the third element at index 2 is 5. So we got the three element array, which is 1, 3, and 5. And why is the output is 2? That is because we do these operations. And there's another example. Let's just take a look at our slides. This is the first example, right? n equals to 3, and array is 1, 3, and 5. So first operation, what we need to do is we pick the first and last indices and then we increment this one and decrement this one so we got from 1 3 and 5 we got 2 3 and 4 this is what the required operation we decrement one in the first half and we increment one in the second half or you can pick any one you want but since this is a very arithmetic sequence so we'll just do it this way the second operation apparently we can increment this one and decrement this one then all of the three elements are equal right so we need two operations that's why the output for this one is two now let's take a look at the second example which is n equals to six so first we'll get the the six element array which is this is a very arithmetic sequence so it's one three five seven nine and eleven so the first operation that we can do is we increment this and decrement this, right? Second operation, we keep incrementing this, keep decrementing this. Second. So third one, you can see we can three, we have, we got two threes and two nines. So we can decrement either one of these two or increment either one of these two. So four and eight. All right. Then we got a bigger one, a smaller one. So we'll keep incrementing this and keep decrementing this. All right. 4, 4, 8, 8. Fifth operation is we keep incrementing this, keep decrementing this. Sixth operation will de we'll keep decrementing this and keep incrementing this. Right? So now the first half are all five, the second half are all sevens. So we can, we need to increment, as you can see, we need to increment all of these and decrement all of these three times. Right? So six plus three is nine operations. Okay, let's do that. So this is seventh operation, decrement this and increment this. Eighth operation, the second pair. Last operation, we increment this and decrement this. That's why the output should be nine. So there's a total of nine operations. After nine operations, we have made this array equal. All right, perfect. Now let's think about what's the intuition that we can get from this operation. So first we find the minimum number in this array is one. The maximum number in this array is 11, right? And how about the, the last equal number, that is 6? So how do we get 6 from min and max? Very easy, very straightforward, right? We can do this by adding up min and max and divided by 2. That's the final equilibrium number that could make the array equal. That's going to be 6. 
right, the equal number is six, then can we deduce the number of operations, which is nine, from this number six, from either the first half or the second half? Yes, we actually can, right? Because if we see the distance between one to six is five, that means we need to increment five times for this number to reach the equal number, right? And the distance between three and six is three. That means we need to increment three times for this number to get to the equal number. And the distance between five and six is one. That means we need to increment this number one time to get to the equal number. So all of these distances add up, that's going to be nine. So see here, six minus one, six minus three, six minus one, six minus three, and six minus five. All of these add up, that's going to give us nine. We only need to do half of this and we don't need to do the second half. That is because in each operation, we increment one and we decrement one. That's the definition of this operation. All right, this is basically the algorithm that I feel very straightforward to think of. Hopefully this algorithm makes sense to you. The time complexity of this algorithm is going to be O n because we need to traverse half of this array. So n divided by two is still O n in big O notation. The space complexity is O1. We don't need any extra space. Of course, there are people that come up with O1 time complexity. Just comment down below and let me know how you think of this problem. Now with this idea in mind, let's put the algorithm into actual code. All right, let me open this wider. I don't need this wide. All right, this is good enough. So first we know the mean number is going to be one. That's the very first number is always going to be one, right? Because in, when i equals to zero, two times zero is zero, zero plus one is one. So the first element is guaranteed to be zero. And the last element is the max number. How do you get the max number? That is based on this formula, right? Just based on this formula, two times i, i at that point should be n minus one plus one. In this way, we can get the max number. And how about the final equal number? Just as the formula shows that in our slides, it says E, we'll call it equal number, main plus max divided by two. This is the final equal number that we're going to get, right? Then we could just add up all of the operations or the distances we need to get all of the elements in this given original array equal to the equal number. All right, let's just use a simple for loop. We can start from zero and go all the way up to the half point, the middle point of this array. And then we'll use, we'll initialize another variable called ops, start from zero. This is the numbers, this is the number we'll eventually return. And this ops is going to, we keep add up all of the distances, right? So how do we get this number? This number is computed based on this formula. So two times i plus one minus, and this is going, going to, this is a smaller number, right? We're calculating the first half. So we need to use the equal number minus this, every single number on this, on this, in the first half. And then the distance, we add up all of the distances, that's going to be the number of operations we need. All right, now let me hit run code. All right, accept it. Uh, let's, I believe it should be okay. I think it should be, there's no syntax error. So let me just hit submit. All right, accept it. Um, again, this is just one way that we can solve this problem. Uh, the problem is called minimum operations to make array equal. I hope um, this makes sense to you guys. And if that is the case, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and help me out tremendously. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have accumulated quite a few lead code or algorithm or data structure or Amazon Web Services tutorials or videos. So hopefully I'll see you guys in just a few short seconds in those videos. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.